What is up, fathers, dads, buns, and lads? It's Trent, and I'm back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to talk about five things, or five ways, we can show our kids respect while avoiding the parent power struggle. Three, two, one. I hear it all the time, parents lamenting or the fact that their kids are disrespectful or they don't respect their elders or they don't show any respect to anybody. I mean, you and I both know how difficult and frustrating that is when we see our kids show a lack of respect. As a matter of fact, I don't know one parent out there that wouldn't want their kids to grow up being polite, kind and interacting respect, respectfully with other kids and other people. So, the big question remains. How can we show our kids respect so they end up doing the same? Well, here are five tips that I believe that can help us understand this topic a little more clearly. Number one, ask fewer questions. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It sounds counterintuitive. Like it doesn't make sense, like we're not really communicating with our children. On the other hand, we as parents, of course, we thrive on details, details, details. We want as many as we can get from our kids. I mean, we ask questions like, who was there? What happened next? How was school? Why didn't you do that? What were you thinking? And where are you now? I don't know about you, but it's been my experience that when kids receive a rapid fire of questions to this degree, they have a tendency to clam up and withdraw, closing their mouth and making them completely shut off to answering any of those questions. Yeah, as younger kids, my kids would tell me anything. Any question I threw at them, they would answer it. But now as my kids are getting older, they're in double digits, there's less of an attraction to those questions and less of a desire to give the extensive answers. I mean, when these questions are coming from a place of judgment or a lack of confidence in our kids, yeah, I would not disagree with them whatsoever if they decided not to answer. I mean, unless it's an emergency situ situation and their lives are in danger, I don't think we need to know the answers as soon as we think we do. So maybe instead of, how was school today? And what did you do at school? Maybe just a positive statement like, Hey, welcome home, guys. I'm so glad to see you. And instead of asking, so what was on the test today? Did you find it difficult? You could probably say something to the degree of, Man, I sure do miss you when you're at school. My favorite part of the day is when you come to that door and I get to see your face again. My son hates me when I ask this question. So did you like your lunch? Did you eat all your lunch today? I don't know why, he just doesn't like it. Instead, I make a passing comment like, Hey, I hope you enjoyed your lunch today. When we're constantly hounding our kids for answers, it just doesn't sit well with them most times. And they don't want to be vulnerable unless they're ready. When they feel like they've warmed up and probably in a better mood, maybe we can have an extensive conversation about these things later. But until then, let's not be so thorough with the questions. Number two, wait to respond. I mean, as parents, we just get a barrage of questions fired at us from time to time. So many that our mind is going a mile a minute, we're distracted with the work we have to do, and we just don't really stop and think about the answer we're about to give them. The bottom line is stay engaged, let them know they've been heard, and let them know that you're interested in answering them in due time. Another thing I've learned with our kids too is that if our kids learn that they get an on-demand answer every time we ask questions, then they are not being taught to wait until the right time comes for their, answer, for their question to be answered. Sometimes we just need to give them an opportunity to think about the question they've asked and maybe come up with an answer for themselves. My daughter has asked silly questions like, do snakes have ears? Hey dad, how do you build a tower? 
Hey Dad, I got a question about the homework I'm doing right now. Can you help me with it? Maybe your response could be, I don't know. What do you think? How do you think that this should be built? I don't know. I don't have it figured out, but I think the longer I wait to answer, it gives them the opportunity to actually solve their own problems and questions that they're asking. I don't know. Next time, why not try it? Delay your answer and think about it, but get them to think about it too. Number three, I think we need to let our kids own their own bodies. Now, before you come to any conclusion, let me explain. If your kids are at an age where they can take care of themselves, let them shower, let them bathe by themselves. Allow them to choose their own clothes, their own hairstyle. I really didn't like this when I was a kid, and I think I may, may have been in double digits at the time. But if my mother seen a piece of, I don't know, food on my chin or lips or face, she would come with a tissue and wipe it off. And I thought that was so embarrassing. Here's another one. If your kid's pants are kind of falling down over their butt, maybe just let them know, hey, your pants are falling over your butt. Don't go over and yank them up. I think that kind of gives a sense of violation. They're at an age where they can help themselves. I mean, at a certain point, we have to reframe from... I don't know, brushing their hair, wiping food off their face, avoiding tucking in their shirt, or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying. For instance, if they have ketchup on their face or some kind of sauce from eating their food, instead of reaching over and wiping their face, why not just say, hey, you got something on your face and here's a napkin. You can choose to wipe it off. These little considerate motions, I think goes a long way because we're teaching our kids to own their own body, to take care of themselves. And number four, let your child answer for themselves. You're at a family gathering, you're at a friend's house, a party, and a parent asks you, how old is so-and-so, your child? Or does he play sports? Instead of giving all the answers, why not call your child over and say, hey, this lady's got some, or this guy's got some questions for you. Sometimes when we interject and try to answer for our kids, I think one of two things sometimes happen. We kind of devalue their opinion and ability to actually answer for themselves. And we think it's our job to rescue them from maybe a very awkward situation that may cause them to go silent. But remember, these silent moments are causing them to think. And it's okay because they need to know in life there are going to be awkward moments it gives them the opportunity to think through it. So, instead of you answering for your child when the question comes to his attention, hey, do your son play any sports? Instead of giving the answer, look over at your son or daughter and say, hey, I let him answer that. He knows more than I do. It's simple. You're deferring the responsibility to them. And number five, show respect for your child's ability and readiness to do things. Listen, we need to know when our kids are ready and willing to do certain activities. There was a specific uh, event happened in our lives. We were on holiday with our family and I had this nice day planned to go out and boat and we had lunch packed. We had a destination to go to. My kids were excited the night before, but when it came time for us to get in the boat to go, my son wasn't interested and he wasn't ready. I know what you're saying. Well, you're going somewhere, so you force him in the boat. I hear what you're saying. But the reality is, whether we went or not wasn't gonna make or break our holiday. Eventually, we went on a boat ride together, but it was a couple days later. Um, he was just working through some fear issues. But at the end of the day, hey, when he was ready, we had fun and we enjoyed it and made memories. Hey, if you're experiencing any of these five things as a parent, why don't you let me know how you're dealing with them? and if some of these strategies helped you or not. At the end of the day, it's all about showing our kids respect and empowering them to live the lives that we, we want them to live as adults, starting now. Well guys, I hope that was beneficial and educational for you. This is Trent, FC, thanks for dropping by. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell for more content. Remember, your kids are worthy of your respect. I'll catch you on the flippity.